okay, thank you very much for inviting me. I'd like to thank the organization uh, for giving me the po possibility to show you our uh, results um, from uh, the adult ICU in Rotterdam. This is my conflict of interest for this talk. Um, and what we used is electrical impedance tomography. Um, and this is an, uh, 16 electrodes around the thorax and the small current is inject, injected uh, to measure impedance changes or resistance changes. So between a pair of electrodes, a small current is injected and you are measuring the time needed to reach the other electrodes. Um, and then this is uh, uh, running, and then in one second you are uh, collecting 50 images, digital images. And then what you see here, here is in white, is it's a large impedance change, and the impedance change in the thorax is due to uh, ventilation, air coming in. Blue is smaller impedance change, and black is no impedance change. And like the CT scan, this is the right lung, and here in this example, this is the left lung. So you see a lot of impedance change here on the ventral side, dorsal side, and here in the middle of the left lung. So what important is, is, is in, 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 uh, in contrast with CT, with EIT, due to the uh, spatial resolution, you only visualize regional ventilation. For example, when you have an ARDS patient, you have uh, with a CT, you see some collapse and atelectasis here at the dorsal side, and, and you see here uh, normal lungs at the ventral side. When you make an EIT image from this uh, patient, you see both black sides on the dorsal side, but also on the ventral side when there is a hyperinflation. So due to the ventilation, when you don't see ventilation at the ventral side, you don't see impedance change here. There is still lung tissue, but no ventilation. Uh, another way to look at the EIT data is um, uh, uh, the technique introduced by the group of Stankfist, where you look just to one breath, uh, this is the impedance change to one breath. And what they did is they divided the inspiration in eight volumes. And this is then uh, here on the x-axis. And then you can look during the one uh, breath to where is the air going in through. Uh, on the ventral side, that is in blue. On the mid-ventral side, this is purple. Mid-dorsal side uh, in red and dorsal side in green. And when you looked here in the beginning of a, if, of a breath, you see that most of the ventilation is going to the mid-ventral side. Um, and whereas here on the dorsal side, there is not much ventilation in the beginning of the breath. But during the breath, you can see that more air is coming in on the dorsal side, probably due to higher pressure, and you open up the, the, the atelectic regions, and you see less ventilation is going in through the uh, ventral side. So you can use then the electro impedance tomography uh, where ventilation is going uh, to uh, during one breath. So we use this technique for also finding, for example, best PEEP. This was a small study in 12 post cardiac surgery patients, and what we did is 0 PEEP, 5 PEEP, 10 PEEP, and 15 PEEP. And again, here on the x axis is one breath, and here, on the, here is the um, uh, tidal ventilation distribution. And what you see here on zero PEEP is that most of the ventilation is going to the non dependent part whereas a small, only 35, 40% is going to the dependent part due to collapse probably by using too low uh, uh, PEEP pressure. When you're increasing the PEEP, you see that these lines are coming to each other. And for example, here at 10 PEEP, you see that these lines cross each other, that uh, the, the dorsal side and the ventral side get uh, al almost 50% of the ventilation. So maybe uh, at that level, the PEEP open up the dorsal side uh, and there is no hyperinflation from the frontal side. That's maybe that is the best PEEP. When you use higher PEEP levels, you see that the ventral side is now getting less ventilation, probably due to hyperinflation. We also use the same technique to see the difference between pressure control ventilation and pressure support ventilation. And here at the top, that was tidal volumes below eight, and in the same patient of in, in the other patients were tidal volumes 
uh, above 8 ml per kilogram body weight. And when you see to pressure support ventilation, you see that most of the ventilation is going to the dorsal side, to the dependent part. And that ha has something to do uh, when pressure support, you have activity of the diaphragm, uh, what Leo just showed us in this mice. Uh, you have an most displacement on the dorsal side, and therefore you see that most ventilation is going uh, to that direction. When you increase the, the tidal volume, when you give more tidal volume due to too much uh, assist levels, you see that um, this, this volume is, is, is too much only for the dorsal side. It will also go into the, to the ventral side. So you have here a more even distribution in comparison with low tidal volume. We use the same technique uh, to, to see the, if there is a difference between pressure support ventilation and NAVA ventilation. And this was in 10 patients who were had ARDS and were in the weaning phase. And the patients were uh, included when the PEEP was 10 centimeters of water and at the pressure support of 10 centimeters water. And that was the 100%. The, 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 the and then we said, okay, we like to reduce the assist level to pressure support five and to increase the, the, uh, uh, the assist level to 15 centimeters of water. And we were looking to the ventilation distribution. Um, and what you see here at five centimeters of uh, 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 pressure support, you see that there's an even distribution between the dorsal side and the ventral side. At the dorsal side, it's around 52%. When you give more assist to 15 centimeters of water, you see that there is more ventilation. Uh, of course, the tidal volume is going up, uh, but you see more ventilation distribution to the ventral side. When you look to the same NAVA, we switch over from pressure support then to NAVA uh, uh, at the same pressure, and you increase the gain of the, reduce the gain with 50% and increase the gain with 50%, you see that there is more homogeneous ventilation and more even distribution during NAVA, but I will show you later. Here in pressure support, again, this uh, ITV curves had a ventilation distribution with, with five uh, centimeter, you see an even distribution between uh, the dependent and the, and the non-dependent part. And when you increase the pressure support, you see more air is going to the non-dependent part. And also during the breath, you see that there is an more or less over-assistance. Eh? There is more air going to the vent. And that's even worse with 15 centimeters of water. And what you also see here is when you increase the assist level that the ED E, the eye signal is going down, huh? so preventing hyperinflation, but you, uh, you are only measuring it, and due to you are using pressure support, you, you will not correct your tidal volume. Then, uh, well, from pressure support, 10 centimeters of water, we switch over to NAVA, and you see that we use the same pressure and the same uh, EDI signals. Um, but when you look to the ventilation distribution, you see something different. You see uh, here sort of over assistance, whereas despite you use the same pressures and the same uh, signals, you see an, an, a different ventilation distribution. Um, and I think uh, what was already early mentioned this morning, that has something to do with the different flow pattern um, between pressure support and NAVA. This is not from the study. I picked it from the internet. But during pressure support, uh, you have a um, decelerating flow pattern. Uh, you have an, an Im immediately increase in, in your uh, pressure support level, whereas with NAVA, uh, you see an, a small increase in your flow pattern, an accelerating flow pattern, also an accelerating a slow increase in your pressure support. And maybe this is responsible for a better ventilation distribution despite the, the same use of your pressures. And here again with the NAVA, you see that also by 5 and by 10, you see an even distribution and also have by higher level of um, uh, NAVA but with more gain, you see that, of course, the ventilation uh, uh, um, will receive more ventilation, but in the opposite, you don't see an over-assistance as what we have seen with pressure support. 
When you look to the results, um, is that you see by pressure support, you see by giving more support that the frequency is, uh, from the patient is going down. That's logic. You see uh, by giving more support that there is a lot of more air coming in. The tidal volume is increasing. When you look to the tidal volume per kilogram body weight, you see we started here with 7.5 7 ml, and here it's around 10 ml, whereas when you do the same uh, with the same pressure support with NAVA, you see that the tidal volume is more or less stable. And you see it's here, it's here 8, uh, 7.98, and a small increase when the uh, uh, assistance level is too high. Um, this was also uh, seen by Colombo, uh, the group um, in, from Italy, where also they use uh, pressure support levels 5, 10, and 15. And you see here that the tidal volume with pressure support is increasing, whereas during NAVA it's more or less uh, uh, stable. And, and you see also the same uh, when you give more pressure support that the electrical activity at the diaphragm is going down. So my conclusion of my talk is during pressure support ventilation, the level of assist should be titrated in the individual patient in order to avoid over assistance. And during NAVA, we found less over assistance with less tidal volume variation indicating that the patient is preventing hyperinflation by reducing diaphragm activity. Thank you very much for your attention. Questions in the audience? Yes, I was wondering if uh, in your study where you compared pressure support and NAVA with the EIT, uh, if you had observed any difference in the blood gases and uh, in the minute ventilation, if there were differences? Uh, th there were no differences. Um, I'm not sure anymore, but the, 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 there were not uh, tremendous uh, differences in blood gases for the group, uh, but I'm not sure anymore if there was differences in, in the individual patients. I don't think so, but I have to look to this data. Thank you. Other questions? I have a question for you, Dietrich, just about EIT. So EIT sits in, on one, on the chest wall, obviously the, the sensor. What happens, the lung actually moves down as patient breathes, right? So you're not looking at the same region anymore anatomically um, as the breath progresses. How does that impact the interpretation of the results? You see what I'm saying? That yeah, you're right. Eh? You are measuring more or less five to eight centimeters. Right. Eh? That is the, 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 the level you are measuring. And of course, when you put your um, um, your belt or your electrodes too low, then you have loss of your signal uh, via the diaphragm. Um, but even, even if it's high enough, w during a breath, the lungs move down. So you're not, no longer looking at the same anatomical region. No, no, but, 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 but um, of course it's all ling lung tissue, but you're correct, you're not speci uh, specifically looking to just one alveoli or one uh, uh, um, uh, sp specific uh, lung tissue. Yeah, it's it, could, it could affect uh, the interpretation. Okay. Yeah. A question? Yes. Um, you showed us that, or you interpreted, that the better distribution um, in your study might be that the flow pattern is different between NAVAR and pressure support ventilation. And you said, okay, the, during pressure support ventilation, there is this decelerating flow. But we always said, you know, when you put a patient on pressure controlled ventilation, we see less peak pressures. And that's why we have a better distribution by the decelerating flow that would be contradictive to what you say, isn't it? Yeah, of course, also the other studies have shown that this high flow may be an advantage for some patients who are really uh, air hunger, but for some patients, you'll see it also when patients don't or are fighting with the machine and you switch them over to NAVA, then they are more relaxing. This, I fully agree that for some patients you need this high decelerating flow, but for some patients, and that's of course where patients in the weaning phase, that they are accepting more this uh, uh, a slower increase in flow pattern or in pressure support levels. 
Great. Thank you very much, Dietrich.